Welcome to this Excel video. We will revisit video 24, which was a VBA stopwatch. And what we will do is have a little bit more of a look at the workings of it and do some modifications. In particular, add two more athletes and reduce the number of split times. So, before I can do anything, I need to unprotect the sheet, so I've already done this, but uh, you'll need to unprotect the sheet. Just select athletes 5 and 6 and hit paste. Now in the second and third columns of each athlete there's a bunch of formulas, but what you'll see is that none of them have got absolute referencing applied to them. There are no dollar signs in front of the column reference points, so you can just paste them without having to worry about having to correct any formulas. We will have to do a little bit of work on some minor edits, which we'll do as we go along. So we've got eight athletes now. Um, we want to go from 50 splits down to 20 splits. So I'm going to select all the way up into split 21 and click delete. I'm going to leave split 20 run in the rows because these formulas get used in a macro later on. Um, basically the clear or macro uh, deletes everything off the sheet and then copies the formulas in this row 29 up to um, split 1. So we need to go into the code and do a little bit of editing. So if I click on the developer tab and then Visual Basic what we'll find is we've got a procedure called Athlete 1 Split. Now we need to do a couple of things. The first one is edit the references that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 um, uses. And the second thing we need to do is add two copies of this so that we can cover Athlete 7 and 8 that we've just added. So firstly we'll edit the references. At the moment it's using cell B59 and we want to change that to 29. So I'm going to select all of these procedures. Use the keyboard shortcut Control H and I want to change 59 to 29. Next I want to copy Athlete 6 macro and paste it twice. The last one becomes Athlete 8. The second last becomes Athlete 7. Now, the first line of each of these little procedures references a cell, and at the moment, because we just copied it, it says the same as number 6. We obviously don't want that. It was referencing column Q. We need to reference column T for athlete 7 and W for athlete 8. T and W Simple as that. Now when we go back here the button copied across when we copied athletes 5 and 6 but if we hit this button now it's really just going to run the code for athlete 5 rather than athlete 7 so we have to right click on the button and assign a different macro to it now just for argument's sake if you wanted to have drawn these buttons from scratch on the developer tab click insert and inform controls the first top left button is what you click on gives you a little cross here and you simply drag it to the size and shape that you want and then allocate the macro. We'll have to edit the text. Great. Now let's see if that works. Edit this text as well first. So Athlete 7 works fine, Athlete 8 also works fine, great, so we're looking good. 
Now a little piece of code in each of these buttons is referencing back to cell A1 every time you hit it. And we'll modify that shortly. As we can see here, if I click Athlete 8, the cursor ends up in cell A1. So let's look at that code. So an Athlete 1 split, it goes to A1. So I'm going to change that to be the column that the value is in. H K Go back and check that out. Great, that all seems to be working fine. All those buttons are working as they should. Now, so we've taken care of those buttons. We haven't taken care of the clear all button yet. So we need to do that. And we'll find the code for that further down. So here it is, clear all athletes. Now the first thing it does is it deletes everything in cells B8 to S58. So we don't want that. We want to delete everything from B8 to Y28. So we'll just edit the code there. B8 Y28. And now what we need to do is copy the formulas back up for each of those athletes. And so at the moment, we've got it all in place for athletes 1 to 6, except that it's copying it from row 59. So I'm going to use the find and replace again. Control H. And we need to do it again for 58. Okay, so that's good. And we now just need to copy and edit the code for athletes 7 and 8. So instead of R and S, we need U and V and X and Y. Okay now, so it would, it would appear that that code is now ready, and if I hit clear all, everything still works as it should. Great. So we've done all the start buttons and the clear all button, and that's going well. But unfortunately we haven't taken care of this group start, because there's only six athletes on there. So we need to go back into the code and edit that one. So as you can see here, there's modules and there's forms. The form needs to be built. So I'm just going to change the size of this. I'm going to drag this up here. So I'm just going to paste a couple more. Edit the text. And very importantly, I need to just make sure that the name of this particular item is correct. So here you see it's called checkbox 7 and checkbox 8. That's a name that the 
uh, Excel VBA automatically gave to this particular item but you can call it what you like and typically when I'm making complicated forms I'll, I'll give a name that's very descriptive so it's easy for me to uh, know when I'm writing code now I just want to preview this form that's what it's going to look like it's not perfect you probably do uh, two rows of four if you wanted it to look pretty but this is going to be fine I previewed that just by hitting F5 but what I need to do is right click on this form and hit view code and as we can see here <coughs> there's one little procedure that runs and basically what it says is if checkbox 1 is true i.e. it has been ticked then you need to start the athlete 1 split piece of code so I need to add two more for our two new athletes Great, so now that's working as well. Alright, so let's try that. Group start, athlete 1, 2, 3, 7, and 8, start. Okay, everything seems to be working just fine. Clear all, one more time. Great, so we've modified the procedure. There's now eight athletes, there are now 20 splits. The various buttons that we have created work just fine. So really there's not much else to look at. The only thing really that um, is worth looking at is I guess getting an understanding of how the process works and I know when I was building this I had a few issues with regard to working with times <coughs> and so this particular formula here that you can see on screen and it's a pretty nasty one really what it's doing is it's trying to convert what is basically a piece of text identified I'll hit it. So as you can see here, this particular value consists of four double digit numbers, each separated by a colon. And so the formula, what it's trying to do is understand that the first two numbers indicates hours. And that's why this piece of code here is looking at it and saying tell me how many uh, seconds there are as indicated by this particular time the next one says how many minutes the next one says how many seconds and the next one says how many milliseconds and so effectively what is being calculated if I select this entire part I have to make sure I get the right number of brackets which is never easy to do try that Colors are quite helpful, but not always easy to pick that up. That should be right. So what it's trying to do, unfortunately, uh, it's doing it on a blank cell. Um, so I'll do it on the second part. It's working out basically how many seconds have elapsed from that timestamp. So the timestamp you are seeing in cell B12 is 3.55 p.m. 11 seconds and 27 milliseconds. And so this number 5, 3, 5731127 
is an indicator of how many seconds have elapsed. And so really all it, this whole formula is doing is calculating the difference in seconds between the first timestamp and the second timestamp. And the code is simply, as you can see, this is um, just a, a number with a whole lot of decimal places. The code is just copying and pasting that as a value. This elapsed time is simply a sum of all of that. And this is the value that gets pasted every time you hit the athlete one button. So I do remember making this and it was a bit of a process because working with milliseconds in particular was quite a challenge. But I simply came to the conclusion that I could use it. Um, I could use text functions, which were the excuse me, the left and mid and right functions to be able to just pull out numbers, multiply them out using simple mathematics because I know how many milliseconds are in a second, how many seconds are in a minute, how many minutes are in an hour, and how many hours are in a day. I could just work through those processes. So. The one complicated formula is really just subtracting um, one time from another using probably an overly complicated but still very effective function. Anyhow, hopefully those that have been interested in this spreadsheet um, know a little bit more now and certainly uh, could be in a position to go and modify it and play with it for your own purposes. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.